Ashley Dudareno, you have been living in China for many years and have been involved in online trade in China, an industry that has seen massive growth. A new addition is social commerce. How would you describe it? What do we need to know about it? Well, social commerce is a combination of commerce and social media. And in China right now, every social media platform is introducing their e-commerce function. And e-commerce platforms are introducing their own social media functions because ultimately it's all about young people right now adapting to the new environment, which is on the go content consumption, which is watching live streams, which is watching short videos, which is having this fragmented time like uh, five times a day when you are checking your phone and really want to understand what's happening in the world around you, but not just in the immediate world around you in a much broader sense. So social commerce is really meeting your customer halfway, be it on e-commerce platform, on social media, or sometimes even in online merging offline setting. And in China, that model is also very, very popular. So all that together is social commerce. Ashley, video commerce, sales people, influencers are seen as everyday heroes by consumers. Do they work for stores, for agencies, or are they self-employed? Oh, they do all of these three and more. In fact, in China, there are a lot of types. We call them KOL, key opinion leaders, that are doing live streaming or video, right? There are many types. There are celebrities. For example, uh, people, yeah, that are in singing or acting, and then they convert into this social media presence and basically start uh, promoting products online. At the same time, there are content creators, the bloggers that actually focus on their audience, serving them, for example, reviewing some of the products uh, like computers and sharing some of their insights or about cosmetic products, you're teaching you tutorials, etc. At the same time, there's a lot of online salespeople that are actually sitting, for example, in offline or sometimes online settings, and they are in the downtime when they don't have food traffic, they switch on their camera, they have their ring light and sometimes a variety of phones and they're live streaming on a multiple channel uh, kind of setup. Uh, they know how to sell, they know how to entertain, they know expert insights, and uh, essentially they are paid salary and they're on commission as well. At the same time, there are agencies, for example, TP Partners, which is Taobao Partner. This is an online distributor that helps you to sell online in China. They have um, studios of live streamers. Who are these people? These are their own staff that helps brands that work in their portfolio to live stream. And in China, self-broadcasting for a brand which means I have my own staff that broadcast on my brand's behalf on a daily basis is extremely popular, especially when it comes to fashion, cosmetics, when it comes to um, FMCG and many, many other uh, industries. So these guys stream between three to eight hours every single day. And of course, there are bloggers that are native to a platform, for example, like Douyin, they became big on Douyin, they captured this audience, and then they decided to create a brand and start selling it. And plus we have MCN, MCN is a multi-channel network. It's, an, it's like a syndicate of bloggers that incubates new bloggers, trains them up, gives them traffic, gives them money to grow. But the moment you become successful, like a PE fund, they're going to take most of your earnings, of course, to pay for their growth and their own operations. These guys in MCN, they also help you as a celebrity to, to run your business with customer service, supply chain, and you know selecting products for you on your behalf. So this KOL is actually a very big industry in China. And in fact, a lot of young people right now would like to move into this direction and have, build a career there. Chinese universities, not one, but many of them, in fact, prepare young people um, under the qualification professional KOL, professional live streamer. Ashley, do you have any figures on what sales are realized via video commerce in China? Absolutely. So Taobao Life, for example, as of last year, they sold over 400 billion RMB. That's about 57 billion um, Swiss franc, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, many other platforms like Douyin, they're also selling into four or five billion RMB. Kuaishou is almost at 400 billion RMB. And for Kuaishou, this is one of the new plat new uh, live streaming platforms in China. They're not a new platform as such, but live streaming functions in, is newer. Compared to 2019, in 2020, they had almost 
540% increase in live streaming. So last year, which is the pandemic year, was definitely a year of live streaming, video, and social commerce. Can you actually sell everything via like moving images? Are there like industries or goods that are particularly suitable for it? Uh, so cosmetics, fashion, skincare, accessories, anything that you need to see before you make a purchasing decision, anything that's visual is particularly suitable for um, live streaming. If you're selling toothpicks, maybe it can be cool entertaining content, but it's not going to make a huge difference. Um, another category is fast moving consumer goods, something that people can make a decision about very quickly and something that they purchase all the time, such as snacks or, uh, for instance, um, toothpaste. These are also great products to do live streaming and short videos. In Switzerland, too, there are various attempts by online stores. What tips would you give to an online retailer who wants to get into social commerce? Well, if you are a brand that owns a store online, make sure that you start producing a lot of content. Without content, you do not have a strong brand right now. Actually, in China, we also say that you are what you publish. So if you publish something good, you're good. If you publish something bad, you're bad. If you publish nothing, you are nothing. So using this formula, make sure that your content is also diverse, that you have videos, that you're communicating, not at clients, but with clients, that you are right now, especially with Gen Z, that you're co-creating, co-creating your brand, co-creating content about how to use your product and also co-creating new products where you get that direct feedback, where you understand what are some of the ingredients or colors or, or styles that they're interested in. And you are co-creating it together with those consumers. In China, this spills out into social media and social commerce as well. And at the same time, uh, make sure that you are uh, actually working with um, platforms, collaborating with influencers and building your own in-house anchors that are able to uh, represent your brand, your standpoint, your vision very, very clearly. Because ultimately, social media, um, live streaming, short videos, they are going to be the future of communication. China is already building holographic projections and 6G is already in development. So this is the next step. But meanwhile, we already see what the future is likely going to look like right now in China. This will enter our um, brands and our you know, reality here in Switzerland in maybe a year or two. And especially young people are going to be leading that change. So focus on those consumer groups, experiment, be brave, and um, go get them. Thank you, Ashley, and greetings to Hong Kong.